Hello friends from Chakshumati. I'm really happy to welcome you to your 10th anniversary celebration. Feels almost like yesterday that I gave all of you a talk 10 years ago sitting in my living room using what at the time was my Android tablet. And here we are 10 years later and it's wonderful to see all the things you've done. Have a great celebration and I look forward to you talking to, us, to all of you at the end of the week. Thank you. Tenth Eyes Free Inclusive Science Camp Organized by Samagra Shisha, Government of Andhra Pradesh and hosted by Rural Development Trust Anantapur August 21st to 26, 2023. Creating a story of accessible STEM education for children with special needs. Raman Effect in the year of 2012 summer, Chakshumathi, an assistive technology empowerment center based in Kerala state of India who work among the children with visual impairment, made a humble beginning in the world to a movement called Eyes Free Science. The Eyes Free Science summer camp was intended to develop scientific temper and confidence among the children with visual challenges. Then and now the unemployment rate among the people with blindness and visual impairments is 99%. The major reason for this unemployment maze is due to poor exclusive traditional education given to them at the special schools and excluding mathematics and science education due to the inability of the traditional methodology. For the first time in the world, the Eyes Free Science movement started by Chakshumathi advocated for digitally accessible education and promotion of science and mathematics studies to enable children with visual impairment to secure highly paid technology jobs. The accessible technology enable a child with special needs to break all his educational barriers, whatever medical conditions he or she is challenged. The Eyes Free Science movement in this 10th anniversary trying to recall the masterminds who worked relentlessly to make this world equal and accessible for people with special needs or otherwise with various medical conditions who can't read, write, or perform in the way the mainstream society works. The first name on the list is Dr. T. V. Raman. Dr. T. V. Raman is a world-renowned data scientist who made a world before Google and after Google for people with special needs, be it medical conditions or illiteracy. He made the world accessible for a child of 9 months to a grandma of 90 years to a person with special needs to communicate or read, write, or work. This short film is about Dr. T. V. Raman who is the patron and mastermind behind Chakshumathi's Eyes Free Science Movement. The movement becomes a catalyst to make the children with special needs to move out of pensions to proud taxpayers of India. Now the Eyes Free Science movement is strongly transforming the lives of children with special needs across India and 11 countries in the world. The journey I started on was information access when you want it, where you want it, and the way you want it. Dr. T. V. Raman born on May 4, 1965, is a computer scientist who specializes in accessibility research. He is the architect of a world before Google and a world after Google for people with special needs. The father of modern-day accessibility, he is fondly called the modern-day Louis Braille. His research interests are primarily in the areas of auditory user interfaces and structured electronic documents. He has worked on speech interaction and markup technologies in the context of the World Wide Web at Digital's Cambridge Research Lab, CRL, Adobe Systems, and IBM Research. He currently works at Google Research. Raman has himself been partially sighted since birth and blind since the age of 14. Raman grew up in Pune, India. He became blind at the age of 14 due to glaucoma, being previously partially sighted and able to see with his left eye. To deal with his blindness he had his brother, his mentors, and his aide read out textbooks and problems to him. Although unable to see, he was able to solve Rubik's Cube in 30 seconds, write computer programs, and perform mathematics at a young age. Raman attended the University of Pune with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, IIT Bombay with an MS in Mathematics, and Cornell University earned an MS in Computer Science and a PhD in Applied Mathematics under advisor David Grease. 
His PhD thesis titled Audio System for Technical Readings, Aster, was awarded the ACM Doctoral Dissertation Award in 1994. Raman has incorporated audio system for technical readings features in the Chrome browser. Raman went on to apply the ideas on audio formatting introduced in Aster to the more general domain of computer interfaces under the title Imaxpeak. On April 12, 1999, Imaxpeak became part of the Smithsonian's Permanent Research Collection on Information Technology at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. In 2005 he began work at Google. Raman is known for his eyes free speech enabled Google Android applications which started the tsunami of accessibility features for people with special needs in Android and all competitive operating systems and changed the world of people with special needs into a digitally accessible world for studies, work, and communication. Raman now working on perfecting Google Translate to accurately translate world languages and break the barriers of a linguistic world to become one big world that communicates seamlessly. Raman's famous inventions and works are Aster, audio system for technical readings Oral CSS, producing rich auditory presentations from web content Imaxpeak, the complete audio desktop Xforms, next generation web forms XML events, a reusable eventing syntax for XML XHTML plus voice, enabling the multimodal web via voice interaction RDC, reusable dialog components AXSJAX, Access Enabling AJAX Google Accessible Search, for finding accessible web content Thinking of Mathematics, Thinking of Mathematics, an essay on eyes-free computing Eyes-free, speech-enabled Google Android applications ChromeVox, screen reader from Google Chrome and Chrome OS In 2012, Raman inspired Chakshamathi to start eyes-free science movement to create scientific temper with students with visual impairment from the first Eyes Free Science Camp, Raman Video chatted with the campers and inspire and instill dreams in them. On the 10th anniversary, Chakshamathi Eyes Free Science Camp is becoming Chakshamathi Eyes Free Inclusive Science and Entrepreneurship Camp by opening doors of research to make science accessible and approachable for all students with special needs of any spectrum. Um, so what is a computer application? It's some program that you wrote. And what is the goal? At the end of the day, the goal of, the, of user UI is to connect the human and the computer. And what does that mean? You, as a human, need to express your intent to the machine. That intent might be expressed by waving a mouse, pushing a button, or speaking, or pointing, or clicking. That intent then gets transformed into some form of data that the computer munches on, computes, turns into a result. And that result then needs to be presented to you in a way that it grabs your attention. It might speak to you, it might flash your screen, it might you know, make, make a little robot dance, whatever, right? So this really is UI. And so when you think about UI this way, um, what you also then realize that is that you can actually separate the underlying functionality of a computer application from how you interface with it. And then this suddenly opens up this whole space of how do you access the same type of content from a smart speaker to a smart speaker with a display to a television to a Chromecast stuck inside a TV as an HDMI stick all the way to you know, your laptop to everything else. So let's go to the next slide. So stepping back right, and going through the various generations of computing we've been through, I won't go as far back as card computer, you know, punch card computing. But late 80s, you had the computer sitting on the corner of your office. So you had a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. Then you got laptops. And then so you carried around these laptops with LCD panels, and the world of computing changed. The world of computing changed again when you got smartphones and this nice, shiny piece of glass. Um, so nice, nice shiny piece of glass, again, because that is the most practical way of implementing that interface. And then you went to speakers, and then soon you'll, you know, now you'll go to wearables. Uh, so look at this evolution. So for instance, in the late 90s, early 2000s, when storage was getting really small, uh, 1999, the IBM microdrive arrived, and we thought one gig of storage was wonderful in a small postage stamp size device. Right? And so at the time, we used to say, you can put all your personal data on a stick or on a, US, a thumb drive or on a micro drive and carry your computing everywhere with you. 
Then networking became ubiquitous. Today we say, you don't need to carry the storage, you can put all that information in the cloud, but we're still carrying around our displays. Uh, so as a thought experiment, I'd like you to think about um, books that are, you know, stories that are staged in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And you will notice something interesting if you read Charles Dickens. Um, people, when they go to rooms in the evening, when they go anywhere, they carry something that we don't carry anymore. Uh, they used to carry candles and lanterns. So 21st century, late 20th century, early 21st century, we are still carrying our displays around. I don't know how long that will last. Maybe the displays will be ubiquitous, Networking is ubiquitous, storage is in the cloud, and you still basically communicate with these devices. So I'm going to my conclusion section. So to me, what, I, what we've talked through actually tells you something fairly instructive, which is the size and shape of your compute devices are actually determined by your UI peripherals. Storage can be in the cloud, processes can be in the cloud, you can have a phone in your pocket that is basically your L1 cache or whatever. But at the end of the day, the size and shape of your phone, the size and shape of your Google Home speaker, the size and shape of that Chromecast stick that you stick in the HDMI port of your TV are all determined ultimately by the, UI, the shape of the UI peripherals. And so the question is, where will we go next? Um, sensors around our body? Probably, right? Because remember, at the end of the day, UI is about you expressing your intent in a form that can be turned into data for the compute device, and for the compute device to turn the results it has for you into um, a way that it can grab your attention. So here's my final slide. This is my previous guide doc sitting on the hook. Um, pilot seat of a 767, I've always had this as my conclusion site, saying um, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can build. So thank you very much. Chuck Shumafi, when it was started in 2011, the technology was on its infant stage and the life of children with special needs was always a reason for try and find. Initial years of Chakshamathi I's free science camp, we spend a considerable amount of time teaching students LaTeX math writing to enable a visually impaired student to learn mathematics. They spend more time learning input and output technology than learning maths. After 10 years, when we look now the advent and advancement of Android technology and various apps and the tremendous accessibility developments in Windows is now ready for any student who is passionate about studying STEM and aspires to any professional courses in the area of science and technology. 10 years of the Eyes Free Science movement was an eye-opener for many parents, academicians, and even the governments to consider visually impaired students and provide them with permissions and opportunities to take up science for higher studies. In the state of Andhra Pradesh, the government has declared a Project Vision 2025, inclusive Andhra to enable all children with special needs to take up science and STEM education for these specially abled students. The government is now implementing a digitally accessible pedagogy based on affordable Android-based technology. Using this pedagogy protocol, any child with any of the 21 certified disabilities can break their barriers in reading, writing, and learning through digital mediums. This is called the Raman effect of the digital era. Hello friends from Chakshumati. I'm really happy to welcome you to your 10th anniversary celebration. Feels almost like yesterday that I gave all of you a talk 10 years ago sitting in my living room using what at the time was my Android tablet. And here we are 10 years later and it's wonderful to see all the things you've done. Have a great celebration and I look forward to you talking to, us, to all of you at the end of the week. Thank you. The Raman Effect The 10th Anniversary Eyes Free Inclusive Science and Entrepreneurship Camp Organized by Samagra Siksha Andhra and hosted by Rural Development Trust. Knowledge Partners, ISRO, IEEE, AIC SKU, Catch Lab, XRCVC, RLF Foundation, Bookshare. Thanks to IIT Bay Area Alamani. 
Subscribe now to watch more informative teaser videos of Chakshumathi I's free inclusive science and entrepreneurship camp to reveal the journey of the world's first I's free science movement.